Well, while we're waiting on parts for our realistic receivers, I have a couple of them in, in the shop tonight, let's take a look at this Fisher RS-280. This uh, came into the shop and for and is mine for next to nothing because the customer decided to abandon it. They didn't like the uh, repair quote I gave them. Uh, it wasn't too expensive, they just, they've got, they're a record shop and they've got a hundred other stereos, so there's no sense in spending a bunch of money to repair one when they can just grab another one out of the back room. Anyway, it's a Fisher RS-280. You can clearly see from the features that it's from the 80s, probably mid-80s, probably 84 to 86, somewhere in there. Probably, if not about as old as I am, maybe slightly older, maybe slightly younger. Eh. Anyway, you got a uh, five-band EQ. Nice fluorescent display. Ability to have headphones and two sets of speakers. And the buttons will have these really nice tactile feedback. Really kind of a f fun unit to use. Ah, oh, yeah. It may be an 80s unit, but it's still got the click. It's uh, pretty fun to push the buttons with. Got a coaxial potentiometer for balance and volume here. That'll be cleaned as will those sliders over there. There's the main amplifier there. Uh, one hybrid brick per channel. That's a STK0100 Roman 2. Good for 100 watts per channel at 0.05% THD. This is a fairly clean running amplifier. Low noise, low distortion. Let's take a tour of some of the circuitry on the amp board. It is different than you would expect. These look like op amps. They're not. And despite saying saying IC405, it should actually say Q405. Because if you'll note down there, G, S, and S, and G, uh, that's FETs. Indeed, this is a double FET. Uh, two FETs on one common die, they're gain matched, and since they're on a common die, they'll thermally track each other well, and you'll get very low DC offset, which con contributes to low distortion. These transistors here, uh, they are not drive stage for this. The drive stage is inside that hybrid brick. Those are the current mirrors for this. That helps stabilize the power and lower the distortion even more. This cap here, which you can see, is probably stressed uh, because it seems to have stretched its label, is the timing capacitor for this IC over here. And that IC controls the protection circuit and the turn-on delay. If that cap fails, this thing will appear like it's going into protection. But that's not what's wrong with this unit. Uh, we're getting there. I'll replace these caps. They're in a hot location next to these shunt regulators and these, of course, these large amplifiers. These caps, they're probably getting replaced. I got a good deal on some new ones that are slightly bigger. Should give me a little more transient headroom. The rest of it's just inspecting solder joints and replacing a bunch of little caps on this board. Um, they're cheap. They're in hot locations. They need to get gone, so we don't have problems. The tuner, I'm probably not going to recap. Um, it runs fairly cool, and they said the tuner worked great. I'll, of course, test it to make sure, but no sense in replacing caps that are still good. I usually don't, don't do full recaps unless the units are pretty old, and this one just isn't old enough to need one. Most of this is tuner. You've got your typical Varactor tuning. There's some Varactors inside the shields. That little guy there, though, is not tuner. That's part of the phono preamp and uh, EQ. Down here you have your main preamp IC before it feeds the uh, pre-drivers over there. I'll probably change these caps here. There are four of them, but they're uh, critical signal coupling caps, and if they go out, you get really bad problems. These caps over here are next to this shunt regulator and some hot diodes and hot resistors. They need to be changed just because they're under stress um, but, like I said, the caps on the tuner are not under stress like 
the caps here and the caps over there. There's the EQ board. I'll inspect its caps and run signal through it and make sure it looks good on the scope. If I find any discrepancies, I'll of course change parts. But uh, not changing all the parts does lower the cost of these units, and I I can't charge a bunch of money for a Fisher anyway. Uh, they're just the market doesn't allow that. So I generally don't do a whole lot of work to them, but I, I do make them good enough to sell and good enough to uh, last well beyond the uh, warranty period that I give them. Oh yeah, this thing's got problems. Uh, <laughs> this is amusing. All right, well, the symptom, of course, is it's just dead. It buzzed for a second. What happened? The uh, circuit breaker tripped. Clicky, clicky. Don't blink, folks. You'll miss it. Ooh. Gee, I wonder if that hybrid brick is feeling okay. Mmm, I don't think so. Sadly, those hybrid bricks are 40 bucks a piece, but I... Eh, I'll probably sell this guy for 125 after I recap it, so... Eh, I'm making a little bit of profit. Not, not a huge amount, but... Hey, it's a great value unit for somebody. I mean, that thing's heavy. It's got a good power supply. Transformer's at least 400 volt amps. It's, it's pretty nice. I think it's going to get fixed.